thanks for being here. Looking forward uh, to this week. Um, you know, had a really good day today, uh, which was really exciting. Had a great meeting this morning. Guys uh, really locked in, uh, energized, uh, really motivated for the opportunity, uh, you know, to get back out there and play. Um, you know, looking forward to it. It's a, you know, really uh, good opponent uh, in Bryant. Uh, really physical football team. They play uh, really with great energy. Um, they play really physically. You look at their offense and, um, you know, they're a downhill, you know, power run team and, um, you know, take some shots, you know, some play action to really test the eyes of your secondary and the discipline of your secondary. And defensively, they got a bunch of guys that just run around, fly around to the football, hit and tackle. And, um, you know, our, we, we, you know, challenged our team this morning uh, to really come out and uh, have a physical practice, uh, to, to have a really intense um, physical day. And I think that, um, you know, our guys got that message and, and went out and, and did that today. So, uh, you know, excited about it. Um, I was just wondering, do you consider this this upcoming game a must-win situation at this point in the season, given the way you started? Uh, you know, I mean, I think we kind of look at them all that way, um, you know, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I, it's just, you know, going to be, you know, it's a it's game number three. Um, you know, last week we had game number two. This week we, you know, have game three. Next week we'll have game four. Um, and, you know, we uh, do not uh, certainly take a different approach, um, you know, heading into one particular game, uh, you know, compared to another, um, you know, really the same mindset and the same focus uh, is what, you know, needs to, you know, what we need to have. And I think, you know, we've, we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, you know, I've been really, you know, pleased with, with our group and, um, you know, the level of uh, intensity and focus that we've attacked uh, each week with. Uh, today was, you know, by far the best Tuesday. Um, that we've had uh, last week. Uh, we had an incredible Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, which was really great. So it was good to, you know, kind of start things out the right way this week and uh, hopefully, you know, continue to, you know, to, to finish strong uh, throughout this week. But, um, you know, our mindset and our approach, um, you know, is consistent. Um, how do you get them, your team, to not take them for granted? And I realize this is a weird question. Because they're an FCS team, though. Well, I think all you got to do is look around, uh, you know, look around the country, you know, look around college football. You got ETSU, uh, you know, going out there and, you know, throttling uh, Vanderbilt. Um, you got Jacksonville State um, beating uh, Florida State. Um, you got Duquesne, uh, who plays in Bryant's conference, who, you know, Duquesne, you know, won a close game over Bryant last year. Uh, but Bryant uh, just beat the team uh, that beat uh, Duquesne. Uh, for the league championship uh, last season. Um, and, and, and Duquesne just went into OU um, and beat them. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really think, uh, you know, we, that's an issue uh, for us, um, you know, with where we're at. But, um, you know, we started out this morning and we watched that game. You know, we watched the, uh, made a cut up of, you know, sort of the situation, you know, from the uh, OU and, uh, Duquesne game and you know really you know I, I didn't really know what happened in that game my assumption was that you know OU uh, you know turned the ball over and you know some things like that but you know really wasn't the case uh, Duquesne came out and played really hard they ran the ball really well um, you know they they defended the run um, you know they were perfect uh, in the kicking game they were four for four uh, you know in, in field goals uh, I think they were seven to twelve um, on third down um, you know, OU was, you know, one for, I don't remember, one for something on third down, you know. So really, like I told our team, like, you know, those guys went in there and they, they won the game. You know, it wasn't that, that OU just gave it to them. Um, you know, they, they went out there and they fought hard and, and they won. And at the end of the day, like, you got two football teams out there, uh, you know, both very highly motivated, both very highly driven, and the team that plays the best and the team um, that plays the hardest – um, and executes, you know, throughout all those situations is going to be the team to win. And, you know, that's what we saw. You know, they were, uh, Duquesne was 6-6 six six, uh, in the red zone, um, you know, in that kind of that middle eight critical point of the game. Uh, you know, they uh, ended the half, um, you know, kicking a field goal, took all the time off the clock the last like six minutes of the half and then came out, had an incredible drive uh, to start the half and uh, finished with a, a fourth and uh, one. Uh, you know, fourth and goal from the one yard line that they finished in the end zone, you know, so they're plus 10 in that middle eight portion. And then, you know, the last drive of the game, you know, for Duquesne, um, you know, as they had the lead 25 to 20, 
um, you know, they go down the field and OU committed three penalties on third down uh, where they would have had stops and gotten the ball back to, uh, to their offense. Um, but three penalties, a, a roughing the passer, um, a, a defensive pass interference, and a false start, or excuse me, a, a defensive offsides on like a third, uh, on a third and three, um, you know, that allowed that drive to continue and eight clock. Um, ultimately, you know, they, uh, they kicked a field goal to go up eight. Um, and, you know, OU essentially scored a touchdown on the last play of the game and, and missed a two point conversion. So, um, you know, Duquesne went out there and, 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 you know, they out executed them. And I think it was a really good, uh, really good, you know, learning experience, you know, for our team, you know, to be able to watch that and to understand, um, you know, really what, you know, what, what it takes and, um, you know, to, to, to be ready for, uh, you know, for everything um, that our opponent has to throw at us. Um, it was announced yesterday that the uh, game against the Buckeyes, and I don't want to get too far ahead, was shifted to prime time. Do you have any visceral reaction to that? Hey, hey, prime time. Prime time in the shoe. I mean, what could be better than that? I mean, I grew up, I grew up in the state of Ohio, George. I mean, you know, what could be better? So, yeah. We're, we're, we're excited to play, you know, could be uh, 7.30 at night, could be 1 in the morning, could be, you know, 9 a.m. I mean, we're, uh, we're, we're just be, we'll be ready to go when the time comes. Coach, can you just talk a little bit about some of the development of your skill players, especially Mike Miles' 200-yard game in Tech last weekend, on the low back-to-back strong game for him. Just talk about some of the development you've seen in, especially early in the Tech game where you guys were able to move the ball down. Yeah, um, you know, I think Mike, um, you know, really the wide receiver position has been a bright spot um, for our offense uh, in the first two weeks. I thought uh, that group played uh, exceptionally well um, against Auburn. You know, we're able to get open and create separation. Um, we're able to get some yards after, uh, after the catch, and, and Mike is certainly, you know, a big catalyst of that. And, um, you know, coming into this game, um, you know, with a lot of uh, confidence, you know, as a group. And, um, they went out and played really well. Um, you know, unfortunately, we had a couple, uh, you know, a couple drops, um, you know, this past week that you know is, is not typical uh, for that group. But uh, otherwise, they, again, they were able to uh, they were able to get open. Um, they were able to, um, you know, make big plays. You know, even in situations where uh, they weren't, you know, shot type of plays or chunk type of plays or even executed all that well. It was just, you know, an opportunity to get the ball in a, in a player like Mike's hands and. Uh, you know, let him go do, you know, what he does and, and make people miss and break tackles. And, um, you know, I've been really uh, proud of the way uh, that group has played. Um, they've practiced really hard and it, it, it's, it's translating, uh, you know, onto the field for us on Saturdays. And, and Mike is certainly, uh, you know, leading the way, you know, with that group. Okay, finally, just talk a little bit about the performance of Bubba and the linebackers. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, it's just, you know, Bubba is is a is a great football player, and I think we all you know we all know that, and um, he is going to find a way to get to the football, um, you know, play in and play out. He he plays with a great motor, he plays with great intensity, he's very instinctual, um, and just has a you know has has one of that you know special knack for uh, you know really like tearing off blocks and and tackling, and um, you know we're you know certainly uh, you know glad. Uh, Glad he does um, because he, you know, he certainly makes a lot, uh, a lot go for us on that side. Thank you, guys. Good luck this weekend. All right, thank you, guys.